Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, Brother Brand Ambassador, and we have a fantastic, I was going to say awesome, fantastic, I couldn't figure out which word, show for you today. Cindy Hogan is going to be teaching you some really cool things. So if you've never been here before, we are live streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting, Facebook and YouTube pages, and you can leave your comments. We will answer them. We are not live today only because we had schedule conflicts, but we are watching in the chat. So stay tuned. I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm so excited for this project because for those that watched last month, you started showing us some quilting, some really fun quilting things, how to use the new quilting software and how to make a simple quilt. Well, you've really upped your game this time. This is a super cute thing. You got to show everyone what you're working on. Okay. So this is what we worked on this time around. And I did up my quilting game here a little bit. But the cool thing about it is it's less than a day. I mean, I, I had it done and quilted in a day. <laughs> One day? One day. Actually, I, if I've done it continuously, I probably could have done it faster. But beginning to end, you can get that done in a day. It's quilted with your embroidery machine through My Design Center. So any machine that has My Design Center on it, you could quilt it with that. Um, or you can just purchase a quilting design, or you can create a quilting design in your software. It, the options are up to you. I decided to go simple today, so we're basically stippling instead of going nuts, because I was going nuts. I was trying to think, well, how can I do this? How can I do that? And I decided, oh, no. And I, you, I keep it simple, because we've got a like, lot of Keep parts. it simple. We can expand later, by the way. <laughs> but the thing is, is that a lot of people are new to sewing, or they're just getting into quilting. And I think that what you're gonna be showing today is gonna to help, even if they're advanced, they're gonna pick up some tips here. So I'm very excited. So what do they need for this project? Well, we need advanced quilt design software. That's the first thing, because we're gonna create our block. There's two blocks that we create, and we're gonna create those there. You can cut it manually yourself, because the software will print out templates for you to cut, gives you measurement, give you fabric. Or you can use your scan and cut machine, which is what I'm going to do today. And I'm telling you, it precision cuts it and makes the work so much easier, so much faster. When it, when it, especially when it's a small project like this, I didn't have to think about it at all. <laughs> and we're going to use a sewing machine. Now, I quilted mine, as I said, with embroidery. So I used my design center to create the quilting for the individual blocks there. But if you don't have my design center, your machine, you can quilt it however you want. And I did a little combo. I did a little stitch in the ditch with my move it foot. So <laughs> it, it all depends on how intense you want to get and how involved you want to get with this. But I thought it was really nice that I could get it done beginning to end using a combination of the sewing and embroidery side of the machine. So, and it is National Quilting Month coming up, right? <laughs> it is. And after this show, we're going to announce what's coming next month, but I cannot wait for this. So Cindy, where do you want to start with this one? Let's start in advanced quilt design software. We're going to make two different blocks. The first one is this one that we'll make. So we're going to make our heart. Actually, let's make the easy one first. We'll make this one first. Okay. And then we'll make this one. Because you're going to use basically three of these and one of those to make your finished table topper. That sounds okay. good. Sounds good. All right. So this is the advanced quilt software. I know somebody's going to ask, where do I get this? Call your brother dealer. Call your brother dealer. <laughs> Because it's a pretty cool little piece of software. And guys, y'all know I'm not a quilter. But this is fun. It's I'm getting to create my own stuff and, and basically expand my horizon. So I would, you know, it's fun. And it's not hard. So let's get started. We're going to choose create a new block first. So down here on your welcome screen, you just touch new block. And you can futz and decide how big you want this to be, how many rows across you want it to be, how wide you want those to be. It doesn't really matter because you can change the size later. I'm going to go with triangular. That way I get all of my 45 degree angles available to me. And that. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know. Where did it go? I'm like watching. Hold on. Here, you're back. <laughs> you're I was back. like, wait a minute. I'm back. <laughs> so I have eight across and eight down. That's the default. 
okay? If I wanted to go nine by nine, I could do that. Now, if I created my first square small and my next two were the same width, because I thought that gave it a little depth, if you want the first one small, the next one a little bit bigger, and the next one a little bit bigger, you could go up to nine. So I left it at eight because it was easy to do that way. We need to create some half square triangles for our first piece. So that really makes it pretty easy. So there are two ways that you can grab these pieces and it depends on how you find it easy. You have piece select and you have lasso select. Piece select, you click on each triangle that you want to grab while holding down the control key. And once you've got all those selected, we're going to unite those to make them one unit. And then we're going to come and grab our color chart. Let me bring my color chart over here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to grab our color chart and we're going to put a color in it. Doesn't matter what color. You can go whatever colors you want to do. I'm going to go with greens today because I think that's what we're doing here. The other way that you can select is you can do lasso. And this one's a little trickier, but when you get the hang of it, you'll like it. So you just kind of draw around the pieces that you want. If you get a complete piece, it will nab it. So see how it's grabbed everything in that area that I just drew a circle around? Then you and can that unite was, that one and give it a different color. And that was the lasso, lasso tool? That's the lasso tool. Great. So I'm going to hang with the lasso tool because the next piece we're going to grab three rows up and three across. Okay but at a diagonal. So I'm going to grab my last, actually, I said I was going to do the easy one first and I chose the hard one first, but that's okay. <laughs> so we're going to come in and lasso around that. You see how it got my little wedge? That's exactly what I want. So we're going to touch Unite and grab a different color of green. So I'm using my lighter shades on the top. So I, just to give myself that color schematic. And I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. You just have to get, make sure that you get complete pieces, but I'm going to mess one up. Actually, let me mess one up on purpose so you can see what happens if you don't. Oh, we'd like so to have a mess. Yeah, I've, I've missed a few through there. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So I missed that one and that one and that one and that one. I can then go back in and do piece select, hold my control key down and grab those extras that I missed. So even if you miss them, you can come still come and grab them. So let's grab a darker green and put that in there. Ah, that one's a little bit darker than I want. So let's try that one. There we go. And then I'm going to lasso this last one. And I may have gotten too far, and I'm going to show you how to get rid of it if you go too far. Oh, nope, it went perfect. So let me make it to where I go too far this time. So I can show you how to deselect them. So notice I got, I didn't get this one and I got these extras. So if we do the piece select again and do our control key, you'll notice how when you click on something that's not supposed to be there, that blue line goes away. And when you click on something you want, the blue line gets added. So now I've got a shadow around the whole thing. I'm ready to unite that and put another color up. So you use the control key just for those that are like, wait, wait, wait. And by the way, all of you watching, you can come back and watch this. So I would recommend watching the whole thing sharing this to your page, and then go back and watch it from beginning to end. Yes. And so we're going to do the lasso select on the last one again. And this time it's really easy because you can just make it big. And it's grabbed all of those, and we're going to unite that and go ahead and put a color on it. So that's slightly darker than the other one, but not. So everything's got a different color, right? If you want to see it with your fabrics, you can always go in and add in your fabric. So if I go to fabrics and I choose add, I can, let's see here. I uh, wonder where I put those. Let's go into my advanced. <laughs> file. There we go. Uh, wait a minute. My fabric should be here somewhere. There we are. So if I want to grab one, here's the fact. I took a picture of it with my phone. You can use an Android or an iOS. It doesn't matter. I, I just took a picture of it with my phone and then I cropped it in. But if you can go online and grab that, that particular fabric from that manufacturer, you can pop that in there as well.
So you can download those, save them as an image, and then you have the original fabrics. Oh, that's nice. So if you click it and you click open, it's going to appear in here. And let me see here. I forgot to look and see what I called that one. So I'm going to tell you, there's my dark green batik. That's what I called it. So if I grab this piece and I touch that, see how it's put it in there? Oh. That scale is a little bit larger than what it actually is on my project. So if you want to see what it is like in scale, you can come down and change that scale. It's kind of a, it, this is more of a visual thing. You don't really have to do that, but it may help you. If, the, if you're a very visual person, that may help you. I'm going to tell you one thing that I found important for me. When cutting with the scan and cut, not having an image of what that fabric was in front of me mm -hmm. was more challenging when I was trying to decide what scan and cut piece that was. So I may do this and colorize it, but then I'll go back and take the colors out so that when I basically send it to my scan and cut, it tells me what shade of green. It, I mean, I can tell what color of green it is because I may forget what I called my fabrics. <laughs> that makes sense. So I'm going to go back and just make this um, the color green. And we'll leave it like that. So we colorized it just like we did before. And we're going to go up here and do go up to the application button here and choose save to library <laughs> because this is going to save our block into our block library and we're going to put i'll put shamrock one and press save and now when you look in blocks you'll if you scroll down through here here's my shamrock one. Oh. okay so there's my block now let's start to let's make the other block so we're going to go up here and say new block and this one's a little bit different do don't I don't hit save or it'll be like uh oh start over <laughs> yeah that, well actually as long as you don't close your tab you're okay and if you saved it to your library it's right over here in your library so you're you're good as long as we save that to our library we're not concerned we want this one triangular as well. I'm still going to leave it the eight by eight block. And this one's a little different. Okay. We need two triangles and one wedge in the center. So let's take our little lasso tool and do the center piece first, because I find it easier to identify. And you'll basically, I did that wedge right down the middle there. Yeah, so we're two across, basically, and then we've grabbed our two up at the top, and we're going to unite those pieces, and that's going to be my dark green. Ooh. And now all you have to do is grab your two triangles on the side. So this is the easy one. And you'll, sit, you'll find this lasso tool very handy. I'm going to move my little color screen out of the way here because it, it's faster. As opposed to clicking on each of those triangles, the lasso tool is much faster. So I'm going to unite those and let's go ahead and give those a cream color or a white color. You can pick whichever one you want. I think I used kind of a creamy color. And I'm going to do piece collect colors. and grab that other one. Oops, this color. There we go. And then we're going to save that one to our block library as well. So save to library and we're going to call this Clover or shamrock stem. <laughs> I'm feeling that march coming in. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got to give it to you a month ahead of time. Otherwise, you won't have time to make it. I like that. Theory. Especially if it's not a last minute idea. So now we're ready to put our quilt together because we've got it what we want here. And the beauty of this is I can make these, this block any size I want it to once I design my quilt. So let's go up to our application button and choose new quilt. And I did four down. I'm sorry, I did two down and two across and two down. So that's the first thing you define what you want. Two across, two down. That's all I needed. But this time, last time, you know, I showed you without sashing. This time we're going to put sashing in. So if you don't know what sashing is, it's these little middle strips that go down. So in between the quilt blocks, this, let's see if I can do this down. These are, these are your sashes. Okay. And the little area around the outside is technically a board, but the sashings are going to go in the middle. So we're going to come in and grab that. 
The first thing we're going to do, though, is go into our block library. So here's our block library and go find our block that we wanted. Here's our shamrock one. And we're going to put it in here. And I want it in all of my blocks except for this one. So I'm just going to copy and paste and then paste again. But that doesn't look right, does it? Nope. <laughs> right. Well, it depends. Let's go to our tools tab. Uh, that's not what I've got here. So let's go to our tools tab and let's rotate this one, the block that I put in last, rotate it right twice. And then let's rotate this one left once. Now it looks more along the lines of what we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's grab our shamrock stem and plop it into place. Perfect. Let, are you ready to add our sashings? Now this one, I don't know. It's so hard. And I'm joking when I say that because it really is a simple process. Do you see right here where it says sashing? We're going to come in and tell it how big of a sash we want. So I think I did mine one inch. So I'm it, looks do about one by one. it looks about an inch. And then I, my, my borders, which is the outside pieces, I have them one and a half. So I'm going to type in 1.5 by 1.5. And there we go. I added a second border around mine, but I also didn't, I'm not a big mitered border person. If you're a new quilter, <laughs> mitered borders are a little bit more challenging. Do the striped. I'm just, I'm, I'm just watching right now. Everyone's face go mitered corner. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Uh, so if you're a beginner at quilting, I would do the stripes because I, I think it's easier. It's much more linear and you don't have to figure out how to get that mitered quite right. Especially if you're not having the scanning cut cut that piece. And I didn't have the scanning cut cut my sashings or my borders. I just cut strips of fabric. Okay. So let's see here. Um, I had the second one, so to add a second border, come up here and press the plus sign. Actually, my first border was one inch. Let me go to border one. My first border was one by one, so I made it match the sashing. I, I, I messed that up there. And then border two, so now I've got the second border there. It was 1.5. You can make it whatever size you want it to be, Benny. And remember, this doesn't have to be a quilt. You can actually make it be a pillow top. You could do whatever you want to with it. I made it into a table topper, but it's a nice little mini quilt project to start with. So there we go. We have our borders and our sashing. Now let's colorize them a little bit so we know what we've got going on here. So I'm going to touch. I've got the, the block select tool selected. I'm going to touch that little center strip there. And I'm going to come down here and tell it I want it to be that color, the same color that I have my cream around the outside of my stem. And then we're going to do the same thing for the sash, the borders, but that only picks one border piece up. So let's right mouse click on it and say, select all in this border because we have two borders. We're going to select all in that border. And then we're going to change its color to that cream color as well. And then right mouse click on the top border and say select all in this border and we're going to make it our dark green. And that's really how you create your quilt. That's really easy, Cindy. I mean, it's so much easier the way you show it from step by step by step. If, if you just follow along, you'll have the same thing. I love, though, how you can rotate those designs because I was thinking when you brought them up, I'm like, that doesn't really look like yours. But... Maybe you don't like that. You want it a different way. I love that rotate feature because you oh. know exactly what it's going to look like before you get started. So there is other, there are other things that you can do with this. that's kind of fun. So if you have more, if you have two blocks, you can say with quilt variation player, you can have it do different things just to see what you like. Very cool. So, and the random will actually play different variations of it for you while you watch it. So you oh. may find something that you like better, but we're going to hang with what we've got today because we have a, a goal here. Now, <laughs> we want to export our project, the entire kit and caboodle. So we're going to go to our tools tab. This is a time saver because it will save it to your block library and save it to your quilt library all at the same time and create your scan and cut cutting files. So we're going to choose export project. 
Something I need to keep, draw your attention to. The default on this seam allowance is 0 0.10. Make sure you change it to a quarter of an inch. Ask me how I know. It does not go together very well if it's not at a quarter of an inch because I don't know any of us that sew a seam at 0 0.10. But there may be somebody out there. So <laughs> make sure you change that. Once you've done it the first time, it will hold that setting until you, uh, if, unless there's an update that comes across. Okay? Noted. <laughs> so then you want to decide where you're sending it to. So you hit the little ellipse button, which is the little three dot, dot, dots there on the right hand side, dot, dot, dot it and tell it where you want it to go. So I'm going to leave it in my advanced quilt design software and click OK. And then I'm going to name it. So we'll call this my Facebook Live. Damn rock. And I'm going to export that. Why did you fail to do my cutting pass? Let me do, that's a new thing. <laughs> so, only because only because we're live. That's when yeah, usually- So quilt block, save to library. You want to make, I did want to bring this back up. Quilt block, save to library and your cut files. I have it on the 12 by 12 inch. Oh, you know why? Because I've got borders mm. and the borders are too long for the scan and cut machine to cut. That is exactly what that error message means. So I, I just, before I didn't have my borders on there when I chose to cut mine. So, well, that's good to know because if somebody did that, they would be like, why isn't it working like Cindy said? Now they know. Yeah. The other thing I want to tell you is mine are eight inch blocks. And I didn't show you how to change those. If you wanted them bigger or smaller, where your width and height are, you can change your width and height of your block to, to match what you're going to do. But I did eight inches that worked perfectly for me. You can change yours to match whatever you plan on doing. Eight inches are great for quilting when you're doing it in the hoop and because you can use your magnetic sash frames. So okay. is it the entire four pieces of eight by eight? No, the each block is eight. Okay. Each Just block is eight by eight. And the other thing that was on that export window, Angela, was, let me go back to my tools tab. It will actually save out a JPEG of it, which, um, but it's going to have those seam allowances built in. So if you want to save your JPEG out, you can turn off all of these guys right here and just do the JPEG and take off the seam allowances. So you could then take that into the um, luminaire if you wanted to. I found I wanted my quilting a little bit smaller so and I wanted it to match my finished block because you may not sew that exact. So right. I went this route. Okay. And change the DPI that to 100 so it's not huge. That way it'll come in at the size that you created it. Now we're going to go, I'm going to, you could save these files if you want to. You're, when you look at it in Windows Explorer, File Explorer, I guess technically these days, you will see here that you've got all of your different pieces. And if I go to my View tab and I choose Extra Large Icons, it's not showing that. Okay. It show, oh, there they go. It just took them a minute to think about it. I'm like, why were you not showing but it shows you what you've got. So you can actually grab those FCM files and take them directly over your scan and cut with a USB stick if you want. I personally tend to go through Canvas Workspace because then I can sit here and figure out which piece goes with which color. And that's what I was trying to kind of explain. So I go into my Canvas Workspace and I choose File, Import so from just, my computer. Just real quick, Cindy, for those that are like, wait, 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 what software? So this is a different software. She just opened a different window. So this is the scan for the scan and cut. This is Canvas Workspace space for your scan and cut. And it's free. Um, so with your and scan it's and free. Cut. <laughs> and it's a, this is a way to wirelessly transfer things to your scan and cut machine. And this is a way that I manage what I'm doing. I do need to show the printout before we leave the computer, but remind me to do that in a minute. Let's keep linear here. So I'm going to import my from my computer and I'm going to go find where those files are. If I go to my data drive and my advanced quilt design software here, here's my Facebook live shamrock. So once again, if you want to see your thumbnails, you can go up to different size icons. If I want to do my deep green, I can press select that one and choose open and there's that file. So I know that's one of my exterior pieces because I can tell from the size of it just because I've made this one a couple of times. But let's go over here and look back at our advanced quilt design software. If I touch this piece right here 
and I touch down here, it tells me that's peacock blue. So I know that's not deep green. <laughs> so if I touch this piece right here and I come in and I look down here, see how it's highlighted that? That tells me that's the deep green. So I know I need to use the fabric that I've picked for that one. Okay, that's how I manage my fabrics. And then I simply transfer that from here. So we're gonna, I'm in Canvas Workspace again. File, export, transfer, FCM file, transfer via the internet. The piece of fabric that I have prepared happens to be the other one of these. So we're going to do File New, and I'm going to override that. I'm going to import this from my computer. I need the other. So I, the peacock blue is the one that I need because that's the piece that I have, the fabric that I have prepared. So we're going to open that. The other thing that I did in this color was the stem. So if you want to bring your stem in, you can import that as well. And there is my... Where did that one go? That one must not have exported. Huh. I love it when things don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing earlier when you were looking for a file. If you look for a file in my computer, <laughs> we'd, you'd be there for a long time. <laughs> oh, I lied, guys. I made my block six inches. So anyhow, if I'm ready to send this to my scan, that's probably, that is exactly why that piece didn't export because I made those eight inch blocks. So in a twelve, and I had it as a twelve by twelve mat. So that diagonal piece in an eight inch block would not cut that on the diagonal for here. It would be too big. So if they want it for the scan and cut, they need to have six inch. Or change your mat size to the twelve by twenty four. Okay, makes sense. Which you can certainly do. Anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and, and we'll go ahead and send this one over the way it is. I'm going to do file, export, transfer, SEM, just so I make sure I'm doing the right one. We'll say okay, and let's go do, before we leave the computer, let's do one last thing. Back in advanced design quilt software, if you are not cutting with a scan and cut machine, if you go up to the application button and you choose print and then print preview, it shows you your basic blocks, it shows you how much you're going to need of each piece and how big those pieces are. Oh, so I need one piece of this per block. I'm on the wrong preview. We want to go to our quilt. There's the quilt. So let's go up here, file, print, print preview. So here we go. There's our completed project. We're going to touch next page. And if you look here, it tells you the finished size of your quilt. It tells you how many pieces are in there. Tells you your block size, the number of blocks, how many pieces per block, or how many total pieces and pieces per block. How big your sashings is and how all of that is right there, how big you should cut things. So let's go ahead and touch next page and then it gives you particulars about each piece. And you'll notice there that piece that I was talking about that I was missing is 12.02, so it will not fit on that 12 inch map. We touch next page. It gives you the template for cutting these. So if you're manually cutting, each oh. piece will have a template. So they just, it's like just a, a cool pattern, a, a full pattern that you can use. Yes, it, it is a full pattern. And so this one's going to be divided into two pieces that you would take together if you're trying to cut it exactly. And same, same way with the side pieces. Hmm. Okay. Great. So then it tells you how big your sashing needs to be. It's 17.5. So I knew that wasn't going to fit on my machine. And next page. So it's giving you everything that you need. And I'm just clicking through till you get to the end. And because at the end, it actually does a little bit. It tells you how to cut them. And it tells you how to do it from your leftovers. So let's go ahead and touch next page. And then it shows you your different blocks. Wow. So you know what you're actually putting together. So with a few steps on that software, you can become your own quilt designer. Yeah. And then it shows you your blocks. So, I mean, it really is quite nice, the, the printouts that are there. So whether you have a scan and cut or not, you can do this. I mean, it, it you don't have to have a scan and cut to do this project. Okay.
Awesome. So, let's go over to the cameras and we're because we're done with software. We're going to start putting our fabric down on our mat at the scan and cut machine. Let me flip some cameras here. Sounds good. And while she's doing that, I know some of you are going to have questions about software. So I want to tell you while Cindy is switching her cameras, she does have a live show this afternoon in case you don't know that. And it's on her Facebook page. So I will make sure that there's a link in here. We're both monitoring the chat too, even though we're not bringing your comments up. So if you want to learn more about software, make sure you go watch the live show this afternoon. What time is that, Cindy? 4.30 Eastern? Yes. 3.30 Central, 4.30 Eastern. Don't ask me Pacific. Excellent. One thirty. <laughs> All right. We can see you. Great. Okay. So I have my fabric mat and it is super sticky guys. And it's not a, it's not a brand new fabric mat. Just so we're clear on that. I have just cleaned it. So when you clean it, it gets really sticky. I've got my fabric and I prepared it with heavy duty starch. And we're just going to lay our fabric down here on the mat. Make sure that you get it on there real good. Now, one thing I will tell you, when you're doing quilting, you do want to make sure you have your grain of the fabric following the mat. So you don't want to do cockeyed because you're going to, the stretch that will happen, you'll be sewing along a bias when you don't actually want to sew along a bias. So that would be one of the things that I will tell you. I, we're not going to cut every single piece today. I'm going to go ahead and cut one because I have everything pre-cut for us ready to go. Okay. And it's all right here in my little project box. So I've got it all ready for us to go. But let's go to the scan and cut machine here. This is going to be a lot of fun watching the process. And I have my fabric blade, which is your gold blade. Could I use my uh, rotary auto blade? Yes, I could. But this is going to be faster. And I'm all about fast when it comes to this. I tend to use my rotary blade for challenging fabrics and fabric with a without a backing isn't challenging once you've stiffened it on and put it on your fabric mat. So we're going to go ahead and touch OK and wake my machine up and I'm going to touch cancel there. Put it between the grooves and let's load that mat in. So let's touch the load button. And you'll, I hold my hand down on my mat until it's taken up underneath those rollers to make sure that it's going to get in there nice and good. And let's go ahead and retrieve our data. Since I came from Canvas Workspace, this is what I would choose. If I saved them all to my USB, this would be what I would choose. We're going to retrieve from Canvas Workspace because that's where that file is that I have. There's my pieces. Let's go do a background scan and touch start. Now, since I made an eight inch block today while we were playing, I did not, I'm not sure if they're all going to fit on my piece of fabric, but they should. <laughs> I didn't this make a full piece of fabric here. Make it work. Make it work. We'll make it work. We may just cut one piece. We'll see what's going to happen. I'm doing a background scan so that I can see if they're going to fit. And what do you know? Looky there. They all fit on there. Perfect. So, but I want to move them over just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and touch edit and I'm going to select everything. Touch OK, and then I'm just going to move them over just a little bit with my little arrows here, just to make sure everybody's playing nice in the sandbox and I don't have anything over on the side. I went too far. There we go. Everything looks good, nice inside my fabric, so I'm going to go ahead and touch OK. Touch OK again. Touch OK one last time. And now we're going to tell it we want to cut because your machine can do more than just cut. You have to tell it what you want it to do. <clears throat> I'm living on the edge again. If you have not cut fabric lately, you may want to do a test cut to make sure your blade is nice and sharp or that you have your settings correct. I know mine are correct because I've been cutting these for the last couple of days. So we're going to go ahead and touch start and let's watch this bad boy cut. Yes. Always remember to do a test cut. Um, so yes. If you haven't been cutting lately, you do really want to get that test cut in there. Otherwise, you may get surprised and there's nothing worse than that surprise. So it's so doing wild. my pieces here and we're about done. So, I mean, truly in two minutes, my, and this is for an entire block. So you only need one of these for each block. Let's peel up our excess. Oh, wow. And then you may want to use your spatula, but I really have stiffened my fabric really well. So I can Cindy. just simply pick these up. 
Cindy, just uh, real quick, I know this question is going to come up. Someone's going to say, how much do you, are you using, um, and it's not a brother product, but are you using like a starch? How much starch should you put on there? How are you stiffening your fabric? I mixed my starch myself. So you'll find starch in your big box stores or at your grocery store that comes as a liquid that you can mix. Okay. And I mix that with a high concentration of starch to water. Okay. So I probably have maybe three quarters to a half of the starch mixed with my water. Okay. And if it, I mean, you can always starch it twice. And each time that you starch it, it will stiffen it a little bit further. But that that's what I use. If I you know, if I'm not in a hurry, that's definitely what I use. If I'm in a hurry, I may use a different product, but um, that it's and it's a spray. But that is what I if I'm showing you all what to do. That's probably the easiest method, and it's the least expensive method. <laughs> we like that. So, all right, guys. Let me grab, let's grab our pieces out and let's go to our sewing machine here. So we, we're going to set it up for sewing first. So we're going to touch our screen and go to sewing. I'm on the Luminaire. You can do this on any machine. The Luminaire has quilting stitches and many of our other machines do as well. I'm pretty sure the Stellaire does. I'm pretty sure the Essence does. So and I know the dream does. So go to the Q menu, look for your Q menu. On your Q menu, we have a piecing right side. So Q02 on my machine, yours may be a different number, but it'll say piecing stitch right. Or if yours, if yours doesn't have this else, the name on it, you'll see it in your manual as to which one's your piecing stitch. That allows me to use my J foot on my machine and run the edge of my J foot right along the edge of the fabric and that's a perfect quarter inch seam which is always nice to be able to have a shortcut to do it okay so let's see what we're going to do today you see me down here oh yes we can see great okay so here are my three pieces for one side okay we got to figure out how to put these together because they got to make a triangle. So you'll notice the flat side here and we need the flat side here. So this triangle goes to this one. And basically you want to match your edges there. Then what I do is turn it over and sew it from the other side. And the reason I do that is because then you can catch both back. You can see that that tip is where it needs to be. And I will lower my foot and then I kind of cheat here. I, now I have learned to sew one handed this week, hopefully better than I have done in the past, but I will also lift my foot up and make sure that it's right alongside that outside edge and where I need it to start stitching. So I'm eyeballing that and we are going to take it off, take off from here and stitch down right along that edge. Cut it. And you can do all of your pieces like this. So you're doing three for a square. You could do them all, but look there. See how perfect that is? You don't think That's it's going to work that perfectly, but it does. So now we this has to go to here, right? So we're going to take this, put, place it face down on top of it, or you can go the opposite direction. And I usually tuck this one out of the way. So we're going to place this down on top of it. And do the same thing. And you do that for all three, so all three of your blocks. So you'll have three of this side and you'll have three of the opposite side. And you're going to do that for all three of your blocks. Do you think I need to sew another one or are we good with that? Oh, I think you should sew another one if you have it right there. I have it right here. Where did my little piece go? Here we go. I only right. say that because some people are so new to this and they're like, let me just see a little bit more. Okay. So here we are on the opposite side. So same way, these three have to go together like this. So we're going to do this piece to this one and tuck it up underneath there. And I'm a right-handed sewer, guys. I, I think right-sided, so I always you'll always see me on the right side. I'm going to put my foot back down. 
and it looks like I'm a little bit off down there. So there we go. And then I lifted it up by hand in the back so that I can get it exactly where I wanted it to go. That's just, that way I know I'm where I want it to be. My foot is right along the outside edge of my fabric. Cut and trim. And you'll notice, there we go. See how nice that is? Looks good. Hey, Cindy, are you, um, if somebody wants to know, should they, or does it matter if they add a back stitch or not? Can they just sew? Cause you're going to be running that seam through something else anyways. We're going to be running this seam through something else anyway. As long as your seam is kind of tight, you should be pretty good. Okay. I mean, if you want to put a back stitch on it, you certainly can. I, um, and, and the reason I haven't done it on this one is because I have had to unsew it. Okay. <laughs> And it's harder to get it out if you have that back stitch on. So, yeah, no one's, we don't want to unsew anyways. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of one of those, if you want to do that, you certainly can. And it, it's probably best practice. I just have chosen not to. I will tell you if I, if I do a back stitch, I will go forward first and then I will back stitch. Sounds good. And the reason I do that is so that my back stitch doesn't get caught along the edge of my fabric. So I'll start a little bit further in and then back stitch. But there we go. So now those are all pieced. Are we good with that? That looks wonderful. Yes. So now let's go over and press them. So all of your pieces. Pressing, you. pressing, pressing, pressing is so important. Yes, the pressing part is the most important, one of the most important steps that you can do. So I have my pressing station here right next to me. And you're going to notice, let's take one of these first. One side, you're going to go this way. So you'll notice how I've got my seams going one direction because I'm going to nest these. And, by, and I'll show you what I mean nest here in just a second. So there, that's pressed to that direction. And the other side that we just sewed, we're going to flip it and press it the opposite direction. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can come in and trim those little tips off there. It doesn't matter. I pressed them both the same way. Oops. And I sewed two of the same fabric on here. I must not have put my fabrics in there right. All right. So our middle one is going to have the same fabric. Y'all, you know, live, you can't help it. Everything. <laughs> You know what? I love it, though, because somebody else is going to be doing the same thing and they're going to be like, ah, oh, and instead they're going to say Cindy did it, too. So, and, and, well, actually, guys, I sewed two of the same thing, except for I put the wrong triangle on the bottom. That is exactly what I did here. So here we go. <laughs> Through the magic. <laughs> uh, but I've got the wrong triangle. So here we go. <laughs> I have one ready. Um, all right. There we go. Let's make our seams go this direction for this one. Go on. You have, wrong with that. So just to be clear, you have seams going one direction with one of the pieces and the other direction with the other. Yes, I do. Because what that allows you to do is come in here and nest these two seams together. So it fits nice and flat there. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yeah. It, so it's a little nice and idea. Would you say that again, please? We can see it's a little dark, but we, we get what you mean. Like the seams are ma matching up. Yeah, the seams will nest in there really nicely and match up for you. And then you're going to take it, and I usually will pin and make sure that my pieces are together. So, yeah, sewing with dark fabric makes this a little bit more challenging for you all to see it. But hopefully when I put it under the machine over here, you'll see. I'll show you one more time under while I'm under the machine. Sounds good. Okay. So you can see that if you look here, my, my seams are going to nest together so that they won't shift. And you can tell that my piece, the end pieces here, that is still dark. No, we there can we see go. it real good right there. That's perfect. The end pieces there are matching up. So now you're going to take those, we've got those two right sides together. We're going to put them up underneath here, just like we did before. And like I said, I pinned mine in place. I'm going to put it on the edge of my foot one more time. And then we're simply just going to stitch right down the side. And I, I come back in here and make sure my sides are going to match up here. 
There we go. Now don't pull on this one because it is on the bias. So I do want to make sure that you don't pull on that because then you'll get a wonky seam. <laughs> we and don't want that's wonky, no fun. No wonky seams. No wonky seams. Uh, this is awful hard to sew one handed with this piece. So it may be a little crooked. And you would do that for all three of your blocks. So let's go look and see what we've got. Clip it. And here is that block done together. Oh, that looks great. Um, I mean, pretty impressive how well that goes together. And as I said, I think this is a good project for beginners, just simply because it's straight sewing. And if you make a mistake, you don't have huge seams that you're having to rip out. And I personally pressed these open for this because when I put them together, when I put everything together, there was so much meeting down here in this corner that oh. it was going to be, that it wasn't a good plan. So I personally sense. pressed my seams open down the center. Yeah. And that looks perfect, Cindy. It looks great. Even with my crooked sewing, it's, Pretty darn close to perfect there. <laughs> so once you've done that, you would have cut your borders, your sashings first. I'm, I am not going to walk you through the whole constructing this. I'll walk you through it, but I'm not going to actually sew these pieces on. <clears throat> so I use basic, I cut a, an inch and a half strip. So this right here is my white sashing. And I put one block to the stem. What you need to remember is the small squares need to face the stem. Okay. Okay. Then the top part of it, you want to make sure that your small parts are facing each other and simply sew your quarter inch seam together there. Once you've done that, you're going to press those seams open again, because like I said, a lot of stuff is going to meet right here in the middle. And it goes together much easier if you'll press those seams open. Now, okay. if you're a purist, you may not want to do that and go ahead and you can, you don't have to press open, but that will work better. I think if you're a beginner, that's an easier way to do it. And then you would sew those two together. You'd sew up your longer piece of sashing down the middle up to one side and then add that to the other. Each time I sew a sashing on guys, I'll make it just a little bit longer and then I'll trim up when I've got both blocks together. And then you would sew all of that together. Make sense? That makes sense. You know, that sashing, it, I, at first it looked like it was just a piece of fabric over. It's actually a piece of fabric that's connected to each panel. Yes, each panel's connected by that sashing. So on the white piece, it looks different, but you can see it definitely on this one that that is a different piece of sashing. You can choose when you're when you lay this down which side you want to have the long i mean i just went down the middle so mine is gonna but i'll be honest and tell you that when you rotate this if you rotate it this way your sashings would have been going <laughs> so it, you know, depending <laughs> on how you rotate this on your table depends on the look that you're going to get oh this is so easy to do okay so let's go talk about hooping this real quick and then we'll come back and sew. Sounds good. We'll, we'll embellish, I guess I should say. <laughs> All right. So I put it here in my magnetic sash frame and I did this beforehand so that we could save time. But you'll notice you have three, you have three, four long ones and four shorts. Okay. Two long ones go on the side. A long one goes on the top and on the bottom. And then you have your four shorts on the side. I always do my sides first. And then I do my top and bottom and then I add my extras. But what I did was I laid a ruler down along the, this seam right here so that I could kind of get it straight. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it does help you if it's somewhat straight in your hoop. Okay. That makes sense. You're good with that. You'll notice I have my backing, which is the same fabric and I have a piece of batting and I made my batting and my backing slightly larger than my finished project. Okay. Okay. What did you use for a backing, just a cotton fabric? I used the same cotton fabric that is in here. Okay. Oh, that's good. So you'll notice my little dragonflies there. I have little dragonflies on the back here. Nice. 
I know well, somebody's I, asking, what hoop is that? That is the magnetic hoop that goes up. Uh, it works with the Luminaire. Now, there are other sizes that Brother has now that will work with some of the other machines, but this is that hoop that you might have seen come out last year. It's a magnetic hoop. It's amazing. I use it to do all my lace. So visit your Brother dealer for that one. We forgot to do one last thing because I already had one sewn. I forgot to show them how to do the triangle, the stem. I mean, oh, that, this is really kind of an important one because it goes together a little wonky. Here is okay. my trick for you. Okay. Take this long piece and fold it in half. Because if you look, if I put this together, if I put this on this fabric, it's longer than my fabric. So right. You see, how that's longer than my fabric. And so that makes it challenging to figure out where to sew it. So we're going to put it. Fold it in half, and if you want to, you can mark it with a chalk marker or whatever marking pen you want to do, or you can put a pen in there. Then when you open it up, I'm going to make this piece of fabric, and I'm going to fold it in half as well. And make just a little finger crease. That's the nice thing about the starches. It makes my fabrics nice and manipulative. So Easy. I've got my center. And it hold, they hold creases really well if you starch them. And put that centerpiece right there. Okay. Now you're ready to stitch across it. So once again, put your foot down and just do your quarter inch seam like you did before. And that pretty much makes it in the center where it's supposed to be. You, you may get one that's a little bit longer than the other one and you can kind of trim that up. It, it really is not going to kill your project. And then you would do the same thing for the opposite side. So just take it, fold it in half, make sure you know where your center mark is. This one's a little bit more challenging to find your center. N not finding your center, but seeing it on this really dark fabric is a little bit more challenging. Fold this one in half as well. Make sure it's right sides together. Make that little crease. And this time I pinned just because I wanted to make sure I was in the right spot. And it will move just slightly. So this time I went, grabbed a pen, took it to the outside of that, and then you're going to simply stitch it down just like you did the other one. You don't have to pin. I just found that I was better at sewing it together if I did. Especially you when you're live. Especially when yeah, you're lying. You get to benefit from my experiences of not sewing it together well. <laughs> and this is one of those that I did not backstitch on purpose because I did end up taking this out a few times. When you get close to your pen, if it's anywhere in your sewing area, make sure that you take it out. There's nothing worse than sewing on pens. <laughs> there we go. So now that one's done. There we go. Oh, that looks great. So I, and that's real. And I, I did press these seams to the center, just so we know. You that, press that them toward, towards the center, in. Yeah, I, I just put those towards the center. That's where they naturally fell. So I just put, put them towards the dark side instead of Sounds the light good. side. Okay, so now we are ready to embroider. We need to change out our foot. So we're going to do this real quick. We're going to put our embroidery foot on it and switch over to embroidery. And if you don't know about your little, if you haven't pulled your little screwdriver out of your machine or if you don't have one with your machine, this thing is the handy dandiest tool ever. It's, and you can buy it separately. I love that little tool. All right, let's switch over to embroidery. By the way, for somebody watching that's just like, what just happened? She just changed the foot to go to embroidery and she has she's been sewing this whole time with her embroidery attachment on she is now ready to embroider it's that fast yes i, I did not put a, a flatbed sewing i did not put my sewing table on we're going to touch my design center today and touch okay and i want you to look as i put this in the machine you want to make sure that your foot clears those magnets so slide it in that way and then put it in the bracket now we're going to, oops, wrong one. There we go. 
So now we're ready to design our embroidery. You ready? So our hoop is in, we're set like Flynn. We're gonna design our embroidery now. So let's do a background scan first to be able to see what we've got on our hoop. We're gonna touch the little leaf at the top, tell it we're gonna do an image scan because I don't want this to automatically convert. I wanna actually decide where, where I want this to go. And we're gonna make this simple. We are gonna simply stipple on it. So we're gonna make it an easy route to go with this one today. But we're going to do three different stipples. The first one's going to be a square. So it is going to be our easiest thing that we do. We're doing the background scan so that we can see what's there. So it's doing its thing. It's doing my background scan. And then we're, we're, magic is appearing and our quilt is going to be recognized here. There we go. So you can see here's my square. And if you want it darker, you can simply darken the image. Easy for me to say with this little key right here. So now let's choose our stitch first. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, I want stippling and I want it to be, I'm going to go with black today so you all can see it. Now we're going to touch our stamp shapes key and we're going to touch the second one, which is region fill because I don't want an outline. So this is region only. This is outline only. This is outline and region. So we just want region only. So let's touch our square. Boy, my screen is not liking me today. Let's go ahead and touch OK. <laughs> There's my stippling. And my square is too big for my, for my embroidery design. No big deal. Let's touch the size key. You want to make it smaller than your actual, than the actual square, because this gives it, gives you room to move it around when you're in embroidery edit. Okay. So I've made mine about 5.72 instead of six inches. You can make it 5.7 if you want more wiggle room. It all depends on how much wiggle room you feel like you might need. We're going to touch OK and we're going to touch next. I made my stippling for those loosey goosey. By that I mean I've increased the spacing. So increase your spacing. Touch OK to see what happens. That one's a pretty good stipple. I'm kind of happy with it. Can you see that on your side, Angela? Yeah, we, yes, we can. Okay, because if you can, I can change my color. No, it looks good. Okay, the other thing that I did on that, on the upper one, is I increased my stitch length slightly. I'm used to doing this in metric, so I will slide back and forth between inches and metric, but since I am in inches today, we're going to leave that where it is. Let's go ahead and touch and put that in the memory. We're going to save it to our machine's memory and I'm going to return. And the reason I'm saying let's do that is this allows me to um, design everything one time in my design center and then we can send them over individually. Otherwise sense. we have to rescan and I didn't want to rescan today. So let's come back and return. I'm going to hit my selection tool and magic wand it, select that one because that's all that's there. And we're going to cut it out of the screen. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want my pieces to be separate. You can put them all in at one time, but you can manipulate them independently if we bring them all in into embroidery edit one at a time. So let's go in and magnify. So I'm going to touch my zoom and let's go to about 400 zoom. Actually, let's go to 200 zoom. Take your pan tool and zoom, scroll down here. It's kind of hard to see where that line is. So, but I can tell that it's right around there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more, but I'm kind of eyeballing this one, guys. Touch your property line properties tool up here at the top and turn off that outline stitch. We want to draw point to point. So we're going to touch the last icon and touch OK. And we're simply going to touch where we want it to start. And I'm going to pan over. Oh, I went too far. So what do you do if you go too far? Undo one time. Then touch that key again. And we're going to take it right here. Pan. Point to point tool. Touch right there. All right. Pan. We got to close the shape. 
touch right there. Now we're going to touch our blood fill tool and simply put it in there. And if you feel like you need to add more stippling, you can do that. You can grab your paintbrush and say, okay, you know, I think I want to add a little bit more in here. If you don't think you got it along that line. That one right there will actually cover us up for we can duplicate this one and do the right side when we go into embroidery edit. So I think I'm good. We're going to touch next and see what it thinks. This one I left at the default sizes. I left everything alone. That looks pretty good to me. We're going to go ahead and touch that to memory. Return, magic wand it, and cut it out. Now, that same tool, your point-to-point -point tool, is what we're going to use again, and we're going to do that center piece. So this gives you complete control over where you want that stippling to go. Let's pan up. Pan down and close our shape. Oh, you do have to touch that tool again when you pan. I always forget that too. Yeah. So it's closed my shape. I'm now ready to fill that with a bucket tool. And let's change that color so y'all can see that one. That's still not real. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Gonna go ahead and touch next. And let's go back and change that color. How about we make it bright red or pink here? Now you can see it. There we go. I made this one smaller, so I did micro stippling down my center. And basically, you just reduce the spacing. And let's do it just a little bit more. When you touch OK, we're going to save that to memory as well. Machines memory. And I'm going to go ahead and set this one down on my design page. So we're going to go ahead and touch set and say OK. So that one's there. It's ready to go. Let's go back in it and choose add. I've already scanned mine, guys, so you're getting to see what's there. I'll do another scan so you can see. We're going to choose my design center again. We're going to bring our first design out of the pocket, which was the square. Touch OK. Next. All of the settings that we set are still there. Go ahead and touch set. There's our embroidery design. Let's go ahead and touch add my design center, and all we need left is our, is our single triangle. So let's come back to our memory pocket, grab our single triangle here, touch OK, touch Next, and touch Set. So there we go. So I've got my triangle, and I didn't want to move that, so I'm going to undo that. Oops. Oh, shoot. I cleared it. How did I clear that? Redo, redo. I cleared it, so I got to add it back in. I apologize. My design center, not sure how I did that, what I touched. All of the settings are there, though, guys, so it's not like it, it's not like I killed it. There we go. So now I'm going to change my image density. Let's come up here up to the camera. You can scan it right here, but I, as I said, I already scanned mine, and I haven't really done anything extra since then but I darkened in my image so I could actually see where my lines were. That's how you do that. So let's go ahead and close. If you want to scan, touch the scan button. So yours wouldn't be up here automatically. Mine is. Let's pan in. I actually think that one's pretty much in the perfect space, but I may go ahead and move it. So you can touch size or move or rotate. Any of those gives you the move screen. If you want to resize it, you can resize by stitch recalculation, but I think we're good. This one looks good to me as well, but I think I want to move it up just a little bit off of that center piece, maybe over to the right or over to the left a little bit. Let's zoom in and look at our middle piece. And it looks pretty darn good as well. Yeah. Okay. Last thing we need to do is we need another one of those. So in your edit menu here, you have a duplicate button. This one right here creates a copy. Take that copy, move it down, 
and let's rotate it 90 degrees twice and put it back in the hoop. There you go. We're ready to embroider. That easy. That easy. So I'll start my embroidery, but I think this is probably where are we at? Yeah, we're at 105. We'll go ahead and start our embroidery so you can see the machine stitching. But I need I need embroidery thread in here and I should have bobbin thread, embroidery bobbin thread, but I don't. I have I forgot to put that my colored thread in. I used a green that blended with all three of my green, all six of my green colors. So slightly darker. And I used the same color in the bobbin when I did the, the colors that we have. And while she's up threading, threading that, I know some of you have rolled in later and you're like how do i go back and watch this this was so much information so good news if you're on facebook be sure to share it to your page you can go back and watch if you're on youtube be sure to share it you can put it in your watch later file you can go back and watch as many times as you want and also i put cindy's website below because this afternoon she's going to be having a live show and she will take your questions for anything that went on in this episode here so yes i will certainly be happy to do that so I've actually switched my bobbin to the same color of embroidery thread as I've got going on before I start this embroidery so that we don't make that mistake. There we go. Um, and since, let's do one last thing on our screen. Since I want my this color to be the same as that one, let's go back here and let's touch the, I'm still in the edit menu. I can reorganize. Oh. Looky there, my red is going to sew first, which is actually going to be green. And you can change your colors if you want to. So it's actually in the order that I want to stitch them. So we're good. Let's go ahead and touch embroidery again. And let's get this guy going. So if you want to project, you can project if you have the luminaire just to double check and make sure you're okay. But I'm pretty positive that we're good. There's one thing I do want to show you that I did. I'm going to basically press my start button on my machine and press start again immediately and stop it so if you don't like your thread ha having a knot on the back what you can do is basically drop your needle and pull up the thread then you can have both of them from the front side go ahead and start again so hey Cindy Cindy, we really couldn't see that, but you um, you put the needle yeah. down, you brought the put thread the up. Needle down, up. Bring the needle back up, and then just hold the tails of both of them. Gotcha. It's Make hard for me to get both hands. I'm, I'm severely challenged when it comes to getting both hands in one area at one time. <laughs> but that will bring your both threads to the top. So if you'll drop your needle, bring it back up, pull the thread to the top, it will actually be ready for you to go. So it's going to do my micro stippling first, and then it's going to go do the stippling around that top square. And I do the same thing when it cuts this one off. I'll go ahead and do drop my needle at the top one and come back in and hold those threads. I'll see if I can't get you a little bit better angle this time when we come to that. You want a wide angle view? That looks great. Maybe you can see it better if I do it wide angle this time. But it, it's, you know, I, the machine automatically slows down when you have this hoop on. So it automatically knows you have this on. The sensor in the machine tells it that. So it slows your machine down to at least 600 stitches per minute. So you don't have to worry about accidentally having it too fast. It automatically slows it down for you. So my stippling is done on that one. How quick was that? Pretty easy. Now we're done. It's ready for the next color. I'm going to go ahead and drop my needle, bring it back up, and pull that thread to the top. And if you have to, get your hand down in there and grab it. See how I've got those? And just yep. hold them and then start it. You can trim it once it gets going. Stop and trim or not. I'm going to simply pull them out. And it's going to do its little thing. 
Any uh, any other questions, Angela, that you think that they might have that I didn't answer? No, this is very easy to follow. And I, there's been so many different steps, which is why I wanted to encourage everyone to share it to your page or come back to YouTube and you can watch, hit pause, watch, hit pause. And that way you can follow through. That um, being able to make that stippling in the My Design Center is one of my favorite things to do because I'm not very good at it. And it looks perfect when it comes out of the embroidery machine. <laughs> yeah, that's me too. I'm definitely not a free motion stippler. <laughs> so, but you can use that same stippling for every single block. So once you've made it one time, save it to your machine and you can use it for every single block. Yeah, I love it. That is such a great project. And I know there's going to be a ton of questions. It's I'm sorry that we're not live, but we are watching you all in the chat. And again, I put Cindy's website down below because she does have a live show every Tuesday with software shut in. <laughs> well, we're not shut in anymore, but it's software, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's true. And uh, so you'll want to stop by there if you have questions on this. So, Cindy, for somebody that um, maybe is very new to this and they say, I don't have the luminaire, what would be the best way to do it? Would it be just free motion then to add that stippling? You can free motion. You could do st uh, stitch in the ditch. You could draw straight line quilting. So one of the things that I thought about doing was using basically doing a straight line and then stitching in the ditch in the next part and basically straight line quilting. So okay. you can do that. You could stitch in the ditch. You do not have to do it embroidery wise. Um, I just did mine that way because hey, it was there and easy. Um, <laughs> if you've got a stellaire or a luminaire or um, the 10 needle or the dream machine, uh, you, any of those will allow you to do that in my design center. But if you don't have one of those, there are tons of basically stippling patterns out there that you can purchase. And, I, you know, guys, if you need a six inch stippling pattern, holler at me. I will pull one out of my software and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Cindy, you're always so awesome. This was a great project. I'm so excited. And it's a month early so we can get it done for St. Patrick's Day. Or if you're really speedy, well, I guess you kind of missed Valentine's Day. So never mind. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, if they go back and watch last month, we did Valentine's Day last month, and they have time. And we they should just time. get them real quick. Starting okay. next month, you are designing a quilt block that many of the educators and ambassadors will be using, and very similar to this, but everyone's going to use it a different way. I'm so excited for next month. Uh, yeah, me too. I think that's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. All right, Cindy, this was awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for watching. Can hardly wait to see you on Thursday. But don't forget, stop by Cindy's this afternoon on her live show. There's her website. I also have Brother's website down below because they have a blog on the sewing and crafting side that you won't want to miss. And of course, if you're looking for me, I'm down there too. All right, bye everyone. Bye guys, thanks so much. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I'm actually here undercover. <gasps> March, now. I came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. Oh. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. <laughs>